Hi, welcome. This is Andrew Wheeler, and this week we're going to be going through the Wax Up module, which has just been released uh, by the guys at Blender for Dental. This is a really great piece of software. I've been playing around with it now, and I, it's it's a really it encompasses a lot of lot of features. You can see why they say it's a precursor to the Crown and Bridge and the Denture module, because there's a lot of features here that uh, will be used when those modules come out. However, this is only a wax up diagnostic and temporary module, so we can't do definitive crowns. There's things missing that will be, uh, will be added when the Crown and Bridge module comes out. So today I'm not gonna do a work through of certain cases like I have done on the last one. This one is just to give you a very brief overview to say, this is what the module does. This is what you can achieve with it and then you can make up your own minds whether this is something that uh, you'd be interested in. At a later stage, I will go through certain specific um, processes with it and walk you through um, how we do certain things within the module. But for now, this is just going to be a sort of is this right for me type video. So hope you enjoy. Uh, let's get cracking. This is the um, environment that you're going to open up when you get the wax up uh, module onto your computer. Down here we have all the different um, areas and different um, menus that we can use uh, to create diagnostic wax ups and temporary crowns and then put gum work and cutting tools and bits and pieces. So we'll go through each one of these. Um, first one is importing teeth libraries. Now with the module, you get two libraries. You get a closed shell library and a hollow shell library of teeth. Let me just bring this into the scene. There you can see closed shell library. These are used for diagnostic wax ups, pontics, um, and the open shell will be used for temporary crowns uh, to be able to export them and print them. So these are the two. You can bring in any tooth library you have on the website Blender for Dental. There are some really nice tooth libraries for sale. People that have spent a lot of time uh, crafting and, and putting together these libraries and you can go and buy them and put them in the module and use them. So what you would do initially, you would bring um, a library into the uh, environment. The great thing is you can bring numerous libraries in and put them next to each other, um, having your case in front of you and having various different libraries around so you can see next to each other which library fits better with the case you're doing. And if you're doing six uh, anterior crowns, then you would bring the library in, you would mark those six crowns that you wanted to keep and you delete the rest. And then you can then snap those teeth into the environment, into the jaw, and you can then work on doing the fine adjustments to it. Now, something to note is that you definitely obviously need the model builder and you definitely need the articulator module to do this. Now, this is a complicated piece of software and it takes time to get to work your way around it. Um, and there's a danger of sort of comparing it to XCAD and 3Shape, which I think does a disservice to not only Blender for Dental, but also Exacad and 3Shape. So if you can try and view this as a completely new standalone program, it allows a lot more adjustment, a lot more input from the user uh, than the other players in the market. It allows you to really sort of, it th it's thrown the doors wide open. So you can really play around with tooth libraries, with shapes of teeth, carving, waxing, all those things that we would do the analog way you can do with Blender. And that's the sort of key thing with Blender for Dental is that it allows the user, user to really sort of stretch themselves and play around with what they've got. So that's one of the key things about this module. You do have to have a working knowledge of the model and articulator modules before you even start on this. Otherwise, you'll be pulling your hair out. This is what I mean about putting diff different types of teeth, tooth library within the environment. So if that's your jaw you're waxing up, you can put in as many as you want uh, tooth libraries in there and you'll be able to very quickly see which uh, tooth library fits the case um, uh, a lot easier, a lot better. Uh, and when you snap those, the nice thing about it, once you put the model through the articulator, the software uses that alignment stage to snap the teeth um, to the model. So if you get that right and it 
it works really well when you want to put six fronts in and you 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 snap them to the the model i'll show you that in the next menu um and and it fits they fit really well in with the original dentition so it, uh, it allows you to only make the small minor menu um, changes to to get the teeth in the right position the next one we're looking at here is tooth the tooth geometry now this is what i was talking about when we were saying you can you've got a lot more scope to do stuff now uh, what we have here is is a uh, a way of taking the teeth and remeshing and playing around with the structure of the mesh to create uh, surface texture and change of the teeth and 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 it's how and this is how you can bring in different types of tooth from different libraries and and you could unify that mesh depending on the outcome and that's one of the big things about this you have to realize and you have to remember what the outcome is at the end of it and that will depend on uh, how you work with the mesh and what you do with the teeth. Uh, but uh, this this is a quite a complicated side of it. I haven't really played a lot around with it. It's all about taking um, the the mesh and, and changing into a quad mesh, which will give you a, bit, a lot, much better structure on tooth. As you can see from that picture, you've got a very uniform uh, shape here. Now that can change. We can, we can thin it down so we have less detail, uh, makes our life a bit, harder to sculpt the tooth but things happen quicker sometimes we don't need that detail but um, it allows you to have those options to play around and so this one here is the setting up of the teeth basically bringing the teeth onto the model and um, being able to shift the teeth and put them in the right place there's a few features here that really really work well one of them is this ratio the golden proportion ratio as you can see here um, you bring in to the environment a um, like a template where we can see the actual golden proportions um, and we can then fit the teeth within that. Now you can scale that, you can make it bigger, or, but the, the, it doesn't change the proportion between the central, the lateral and the canine. Uh, we've got a 78% ratio and we've got an 82% ratio. So as you can see from uh, this picture here, hopefully you can see um, there you can see the outline of the proportion you can move that around get it in the right place and then put the teeth in and then move the teeth to fit that golden ratio um, the other thing is also face scans it's very big on getting a face scan in there's a lot of um, uh, intra scanners that are doing this face scan now the medic being one of them you can bring that in we can then take that golden proportion template put it on there and then we can actually see what those teeth are going to look like and we can move the teeth around now moving the teeth one of the great things about blender because it's not necessarily was written for a dental work and it, you could we can use those features of um, movie makers and all the other bits and pieces to help us so one of the things i do quite like is this feature here where we can split the screen open and we can have two views and what the guys have suggested is that you have one view on the left there that you can see from the occlusal surface and on the right you have it from uh, the the front of the, the a view from the front so when you move the teeth on the left hand side they obviously move on the right as well so you can then get an idea without having to keep moving the model you can get two views now theoretically you could open up another window depending on how many screens or how big your screen is you could have numerous windows open with the model in different positions so when you move it on one you get the visual effect on all of them so that's a really i it's probably one of the nicest features i i found working through this module um, and the most useful as well one of the other useful tools that they've put in here just to give you a, a helping hand is this orthodontic um, template where you can line the model up with various different forms of shape of arch uh, to try and improve uh, the, the the overall aesthetic look which i think is quite a clever little feature there you can see on that picture there the ratio that you brought in so you can overlay the ratio uh, from the labial side and then you can look from the occlusal side and see how how well your teeth fit within that arch very very handy um, uh, me personally, I don't do an awful lot of that type of work. 
And I, as I was playing around with it, there's an awful lot of other things you've got to think about when it comes to occlusion and where the lowers are and, and, and all the other bits. But I can see the potential there, and I'm sure this is gonna this is gonna really really get some people's goat going because this this sort of thing, um, I mean, it, it's very very clever, very clever little feature. So. As you can see, there's a lot of tools to help you put the teeth in the right place. Then we've got this, one of these options is the changing of the tooth axis. This is a clever little um, way of working where if you've got, and uh, you're trying to match up some teeth to the patient's original dentition, if you're replacing the, the lateral and the central and you want to match the axis, there's a, uh, a nice little tool. And they use this sort of, I don't know what you call it, a widget or something. Um, this bar where you match it up uh, to the existing dentition and then you can replicate the angle and orientation of the tooth you're putting in it looks it, it works it seems to work very well i haven't played around with it too much i've watched a few videos on it and it, i can see it's a very clever and once you're used to it a very simple way of getting the angulation correct uh, to uh, the, the teeth that you're trying to copy. So the next few are uh, relatively self-explanatory. We've got here uh, using the patient's teeth. So we can virtually chop off teeth from the patient's cast and mirror them and place them back in. So we can use the patient's dentition to replicate or to replace missing teeth. The next one we've got here, on the is the Pontic design. This is where we can, and this is the open mesh one. So this is where we go into making temporary crowns and adapting the tooth uh, to to make a, a a printable temporary because the open shell crowns on haven't got enough structure to print. So you need to actually create an internal structure uh, from that shell uh, for, to print. Uh, and as you can go, we can also design a thimble. Underneath that, which, as you can see from this picture, there we have the thimble. Here we have the open shell uh, tooth, and then we will create a uh, a thimble underneath that, uh, in which to uh, take away, and we can then put that on a bar, or we can put that on a framework, and then have a temporary that will fit over a, a very very close uh, fitting um, structure. So, again, you can see this is where the crown and bridge side of things is starting to come in and the adaption, um, which they're going to need to be able to do, obviously, when you're doing uh, crowns, definitive crowns. So there we have it. A quick, very quick overview of what the Wax Up and Diagnostic module for Blend of a Dental can do. There's a lot more information on their website, so I really encourage you to go over there and have a look through it. Uh, if you've bought one of the modules, you can go through the tutorial videos, which will really sort of hash out the uh, the detail in, in what you can achieve with this module. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, please hit subscribe. I'll be doing a lot more detailed videos um, with this module in the coming weeks and months. And uh, if there's stuff that you want me to go over, please drop a comment and um, I'm happy to to oblige. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.